What's going on? In this video, I'm gonna show you the best photography settings for the Canon EOS RP in 2020. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, so here we are. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the photography settings. If you wanna see settings for a video, I have another video about that, which I'll link in the description. So definitely go check that out. But in this video, I'm gonna basically just set this camera up how I would for photography. So let's get right into it. First things first, we're gonna hit the menu button right here and head straight into the menu. So let's start from the top. The first option we have here is image quality. And so I have this set to S2 right now. And basically what this means, these are the JPEG options. So JPEG is a good image straight out of the camera. Uh, if you're not planning on editing an image, you usually shoot it in JPEG because it's a smaller file size. It's still high quality, it's just not as editable as RAW. This is where you choose if you want JPEG or RAW or both. And now most of the time what I do is shoot in RAW and then I don't shoot JPEG, which that line means there's no JPEG. So I just shoot in RAW so I can take those RAW photos into Adobe Lightroom or any other photo editing software and basically edit them how I want them. But sometimes what I'll do is turn that off so there's no raw images and select one of these. So these are all the options for JPEG. So it basically goes from large, this is the best quality, all the way it works its way down to S2, which is the smallest size. It's only a 2.6 megapixel, uh, which would be a really small size and it'd be like less than a megabyte per image. So if you really need a small image, you don't need the best quality. You can choose one of these lower option JPEGs or if you want a great image straight out of the camera, I would go ahead and just choose this JPEG right here. And then that would give you a great image straight out of the camera. But like I said, 90% of the time, I go with no JPEG and I shoot in raw. Next up, cropping and aspect ratio. This is the aspect ratio that your final image is. Now I shoot one to one when I take product pictures for my eBay business. And that's, that's why I have it said that. Most of the time when I'm not shooting product photos for eBay, I actually go over to full right here which uses the full aspect ratio of the sensor, which is a three by two aspect ratio. Image review, this is basically gonna show you the picture that you just took on your screen right after you take it without having to go into the images. And so this will show, you know, for two seconds, four seconds, or just constantly show it until you, you know, decide to go back and take another picture. I have this off because, you know, if I take a lot of pictures you know, right after another. It gets kind of annoying to have the picture just show up right after you take it. So with it off, you can take as many pictures as you want and it'll never show up on the screen until you actually want to go in and look at them. This thing right here, release shutter without card. I keep this on most of the time actually because what this does is allows you to shoot with manual lenses and old vintage lenses that the camera won't detect because most new lenses have electronic contacts and this camera will know exactly what lens is on there. So when you throw on a vintage lens or something without electrical contacts, the camera won't even know there's a lens on there. It won't want to take a picture because you know, it doesn't want to have a chance of damaging the sensor or anything if it thinks there's no lens on there. So I keep this on so that you know, if I do put vintage lenses on here, it'll still be able to take pictures just fine. All right, so next up, page two, lens aberration correction. So this right here is basically the assists that help the camera fix the distortion and stuff on the lens. I just keep these on because it just helps out the image, helps get rid of the vignetting on some lenses and the distortion on like wide lenses and stuff like that. External speed light control, I don't mess with that because I personally don't shoot with flashes. I'm sure there's a bunch of tutorials out there of how to shoot with flashes on, you know, Canon cameras. So I don't shoot with flashes personally, so I don't mess with this. So exposure compensation, I keep this just at zero because I'm usually shooting in manual mode. Uh, so this doesn't matter because I control all the exposure on my own. And then ISO speed settings. So this one's for video. This one right here is for photography. So this is for basically auto ISO, which personally I don't use auto ISO. If you're on auto ISO, the speed range would be the minimum maximum ISO that your camera can go. You know, the, basically the, the minimum max that you'll allow the camera to go when it's in automatic. Then minimum shutter speed, that's also something that you can change uh, for if your shutter speed done automatic, you can set a minimum shutter speed that you'll allow the camera to go to. But again, I don't really mess with this stuff because I shoot in manual mode about 99% of the time. Highlight tone priority. So what this does is basically smooths out the highlights in your image and makes them look a lot less harsh. 
For example, if there's bright sunlight shining on you or just any sort of bright lights in the scene, it'll smooth those highlights out and make them look a little more pleasing. But it also limits it a little bit so you can't go down to ISO 100 anymore. It gets rid of that and also adds a little bit more noise in darker and you know lower light areas. So I usually keep this off, but if you do have troubles with highlights being way too harsh, you can definitely try this out and just see how it helps your image. Metering timer, I keep that right at 8 seconds, that's where it is from the factory. Exposure simulation, just hit enable on that one and don't even worry about it. And the next up, page 4. So this is about colors and white balance. So number one, white balance, I keep this at auto white balance for all my images. Uh, especially when I shoot in RAW, you can change the white balance to anything you want in the editing software that you use. So the white balance really isn't super important, but I do notice that this camera does a great job with finding the automatic white balance anyways, so I really don't worry about it most of the time. But if you do want to, you can set a custom white balance uh, using an image. So basically if you have like a, a white balance card, you can take a picture of it, set the white balance for your lighting and go from there. Or you can obviously change it in here to any custom temperature or any of these presets. Uh, but again, automatic does perfectly fine for me. And same with white balance shift, this is basically just to shift the white balance a little bit and basically change it to your liking. Color space, just keep that sRGB, that's just overall the best color space to work with. And picture style, this is where you can kind of mess around with and set it to what you prefer. So for most things, standard is totally fine, uh, but you can go to some of these, uh, which basically just change how the image looks. Uh, you know, this one monochrome black and white, I find that neutral is the best for me. It gives a nice, just simple, neutral image look like it says, obviously. And then I can work with that in my editing software. But if you're not planning on editing your photos or anything like that, standard is totally fine. All right, next up, page five. Long exposure noise reduction. I set this to off because first of all, I typically don't do long exposure shoots. And if I do, I can always adjust the noise reduction in my editing software, uh, which is Adobe Lightroom what I use. And so I can change it to however much I'd like rather than having this on and it just kind of does what it thinks is best. And same thing for a high ISO speed noise reduction. I said this off as well because again, in Adobe Lightroom, I can adjust the noise reduction to exactly how I want it. Dust delete data, I don't worry about that. And touch shutter, I keep this disabled. This basically makes it so when you touch the screen, it'll focus on where you tap and then take a picture as well. I don't do that because a lot of times I accidentally touch the screen and I'd overall just rather press the shutter button to take a picture rather than just, you know, touching the screen. So HDR mode, this stands for high dynamic range. And this is a whole different menu in its own. Basically what HDR does is helps to expose for the shadows and the highlights and everything in between, getting the highest dynamic range possible. I find that I can get perfectly fine shots shooting in RAW and then just bring it into Lightroom to edit it. And I haven't really messed with HDR a whole lot. I'm sure there's some tutorials out there of how to use this. Personally, I don't use it and you know I, I get perfectly fine photos. And then focus bracketing. This is good if you want to take macro shots but get everything in focus or you know just anything where you want to get like the foreground and the background in focus at the same time. So you can basically set this up so it will start at you know one focus, take a picture, move the focus a little bit, take another picture, move the focus, take another picture you know, up to 100 shots like it says here. So you can get a photo with like everything in focus from the foreground to the background. And then in your editing software, you can kind of mash those photos together to get everything in focus. Personally, I've never used this and I don't really have a use for it, but I know there is tutorials about this as well if you want to look into focus bracketing, if it's something that you need. All right, so on to page six. Interval timer is the first thing. This is for basically shooting at intervals. So if you want to do a time lapse, it'll shoot you know, 10 shots every 10 seconds like this is here. You can change that to basically whatever you want if you want to do interval shooting or time-lapse photography. Anti-flicker shoot, this is useful if there's flicking in your shot because of lights. All right, page seven, this is autofocus. So these are the things that I typically use. Uh, so autofocus, I put it on servo. Servo means it's basically always trying to keep your object in focus. And one shot, it'll focus when you half press the shutter or when you take a shot and then it'll just stop after that. So I keep this on servo for any moving subjects, it just always keeps the subject in focus. AF method, I'm usually always between 1.0 AF and tracking and face. So this is good for when I'm doing videos or photos of a person because it'll keep their face and eye in focus at all times and basically just track their face 
or track whatever subject you tap on the screen. And then one point, I use this for, you know, any like still objects where I just want to tap on a point I want to focus on and it'll just focus right on it, you know, just one single point. And then there's all these in between. This is just kind of a bigger area out of focus, uh, even a bigger area out of focus, zone out of focus. So you can mess with these, find out which works best for you. They're basically just the size of the points that you use to autofocus. Eye detection, always keep that enabled, especially if you're shooting humans, because the eye is the best place to focus on a person. And continuous autofocus is actually basically the same thing uh, with the servo autofocus, is it'll just constantly or continuously be autofocusing and tracking your subject. Touch and drag autofocus, this is so you can basically, you know, touch on the screen, drag the autofocus point to wherever you want. I don't mess with this because I just use you know, these where I can just tap anywhere on the screen for the autofocus point. And then focus mode, obviously this changes between autofocus and manual focus. Most of the time I'm using autofocus because the autofocus on this camera is super great. But when I do use vintage lenses or old manual lenses, I switch it right over to manual focus because they obviously don't have autofocus. Next page, lens electronic manual focus. So this is basically a type of thing where you can go from autofocus to manual focus or you know you can autofocus then kind of adjust it a little bit using manual focus. I don't mess with that at all because I'm always either only autofocus or only manual focus. So I don't mess with this. Autofocus assist beam. I actually keep that off because this is that LED on the front of the camera. It's like a red LED that'll light up and basically illuminate your subject if it's a lower light scene. I find this super annoying because it'll just be this bright red light shining everywhere. I'd rather just keep it off. Next up, manual focus peaking settings. So if you are using manual focus, I would definitely recommend peaking. And this basically makes a red outline or like red dots on whatever is in focus in your frame. So it's super useful for vintage lenses for nailing your focus on exactly what you want because it'll outline what's in focus in like a red outline. And so you can change, you know, the, the level, I keep this on high usually, so it's the most amount of dots, you know, so it's a lot more visible to see what's in focus. And then you change the color to whatever you want. I keep it at red personally. And so that right there wraps it up for all eight pages of the photography settings menu. So there we go, that wraps up the best photography settings for the Canon EOS RP in 2020. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely go give it a like if you did. And feel free to check out my other videos. I have a bunch more videos about the Canon EOS RP and I have videos about a whole bunch of other cameras and technology and stuff like that. So definitely check out my channel. Feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.